the wildest show in town. There once was a boy called Sonny who loved to go on adventures. He loved finding, discovering and exploring new places. One day a great storm arrived and made the rainfall for days and weeks and months. Sonny had to stay inside and shelter from the storm. He watched from his window, the wind blowing hard and the rain falling fast. When all of a sudden there was a clink. The letterbox. Something had appeared through the letterbox. Sonny picked up the paper and read it excitedly. Bristol Old Vic, open to all. The theatre where stories were told, dances were danced and songs were sung. Sonny grabbed his adventure backpack, full of things every explorer needs. A magnifying glass, a telescope, a torch, a piece of rope, a tape measure and, of course, a sandwich. When Sonny arrived, though, the theatre seemed shut. The lights were off, the doors were closed and no one was in. That's strange. The advert definitely said there was a show on. As he was about to leave and head home, feeling like a balloon that had just been popped, Sonny stopped. He was an explorer and he knew there was an adventure to be found. He pulled out the magnifying glass from his adventure backpack and looked again at the entrance. This time he noticed a trail of birdseed. He followed it around the corner of the theatre and down a small alleyway. The trail led Sonny to a large wooden door, which all of a sudden flung open. A nightingale flew out, chirping and squeaking and singing. Roll up, roll up, come this way to the greatest show on earth, sang Mazarina the nightingale. I've come to see the show, called Sonny. Wonderful! Here, take this ticket and follow me this way. Sonny popped the ticket inside his adventure backpack, then followed Mazarina down a narrow secret passageway, all the way to... Backstage! Sonny was stood on the stage itself. We are still setting up for the show. We won't be a minute said Mazarina before she flew off. Suddenly there was a loud thump that shook the wooden boards beneath Sonny's feet. Watch yourself! Sonny had to quickly duck as an elephant lifted a large sail over his head. Who are you? asked Sonny. I am Priscilla. I am the set designer. It's my job to build the stage for the actors to perform on. Today the show is going to be on a boat. Every boat needs a telescope. Here, you can use this. Sonny reached into his adventure backpack. Ah, that is the perfect prop for the show. Thank you. But just as Priscilla was about to place the telescope onto the set... They were plunged into darkness. Ah, what's happened? asked Sonny. Streeder, the lighting designer, grumbled Priscilla. Sorry, said Streeder as he slithered by their feet. I just need to fix the lights. Could you help me? Sonny nodded nervously. Then follow me, ordered Streeder. The boa constrictor slid up the wall all the way to the grid of metal bars above Sonny's head. You can take the ladder, Streeder shouted down. Sonny took a deep breath and carefully began to climb the ladder. Higher and higher and higher he climbed until he reached the top of the theatre where Streeder was waiting, wrapped around the lighting bars. I need to switch this light on, 
but I can't see the switch, said Streeter. Oh, I know. Sonny pulled out his torch from his adventure backpack, turned it on and pointed it to the theatre lights. Streeter reached out his tail and switched the lamp on. The stage was flooded with the light. They were so high up, even Priscilla looked small. Then all of a sudden there was a rumble above Sonny's head. Thunder! shouted Sonny. Quick, Sonny, through that trapdoor above you, called Streeter. Sonny clambered up through the trapdoor and found himself in an attic. The thunder rumbled again as Sonny saw a large heavy ball roll past him. Watch out, a voice called out. Sonny turned and saw a big bouncing kangaroo. I thought it was thunder, said Sonny. Then that is perfect said Foley, the kangaroo. It's my job to make sound effects. This is the thunder run. I kick these balls down the ramp and they make the sound of thunder. But once the balls have rolled down the ramp, I have to pick them up again. Well, my arms aren't as strong as my legs, Foley sighed. How about you tie rope around them to pull them back, suggested Sonny. Sonny pulled out the piece of rope from his adventure backpack and tied it around the ball. Foley kicked the ball and pulled it back. Brilliant! Now I can make lots of thunder and make a very noisy storm in the show. But as Sonny went to have a go himself, he slipped and tumbled through the trap door. Luckily, with a gentle thump, Sonny landed on a huge mountain of coats and jackets. Another actor for the stage? Try this one. A llama appeared and bundled Sonny into a large woollen coat. Oh, who are you? Asked Sonny, poking his head through the coat. I'm Barlow, the costume designer. It's my job to make the clothes for the actors to wear. I measure, snip and sew. But I can't seem to find my measuring tape. Ah, here you go. Sonny pulled his measuring tape from his adventure backpack. Super, now you must go and get ready for the show. I need to get measuring and making. Oh, no, I'm not an actor. I don't know how to act. Then you should go and see Garrick. He is warming up now. Ah, my fellow actor, roared Garrick the lion as he bounded onto stage. Let's warm up together. Warm up? Sonny asked curiously. Every actor has to get ready to perform, just like in sport. Stretch your body, stretch your faces, and give a big lion yawn. Ooh, I think I need some more energy before I can perform. That's why I always carry a sandwich in my backpack. But as Sonny pulled it out, Garrick snapped it up. Delicious, thank you. Now I can make a big roar. Garrick roared so loud, it blew Sonny backwards right into a baboon. Ha <laughs> ha, you're funny. You could be a clown like me. My name's Billy, the theatre clown. It's my job to make the audience laugh. Billy the baboon threw a banana peel on the floor, then slid across the stage and landed with a bump with her bottom in the air. Billy burst into giggles and Sonny soon laughed along too. But they couldn't hear anyone else. Oh no, there is no one sat in the audience. How can we do a show if there is no one to watch? Billy asked. Sonny didn't respond. Instead, he dashed away and disappeared off the stage. Mazarina the Nightingale appeared and gave a chirping call to the animals. Stand by, company. The show is about to begin. Streeter switched the lights on. Foley kicked a ball and the thunder rumbled. Barlow put a costume on Garrick, who went onto the stage. But Billy blurted out, 
Hang on, there's no audience. Priscilla slowly raised the curtain. To reveal Sonny, sitting in the front row waving his ticket. I'm ready for a show. Whether there's an audience of one or one hundred, the show must go on, roared Garrick happily. And with that, a chorus of nightingales erupted into song. The curtains come up and here we are, on the stage in the theatre. The lights are on and we're ready to go, so clap your hands together, it's time for a show. And Sonny clapped and clapped and clapped.